the Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. You are welcome to this learning session. I am Afu Augustine, Anna, your biology teacher. I am equally your facilitator for Form 2 Biology. We are on the module, The Living World. The chapter is reproduction in plants. In our, our last lesson was on types and agents of pollination. We are going to correct the assignment. We shall continue with uh, the correction of the assignment. The assignment was on the differences between insect and wind pollinated flowers. Now let's look at those differences. Insect pollinated flowers, they, are brightly, they have brightly colored petals. While wind pollinated flowers, they have dully colored petals. Insect pollinated flowers, their petals, uh, they, they are often scented. While in wind pollinated flower, their petals produce no scent. In insect pollinated flowers, petals, they pr produce nectar. While no nectar is produced in wind pollinated flowers. Insect pollinated flowers, they have large conspicuous petals. Wind pollinated flowers, they have small inconspicuous petals. In insect pollinated flowers, the pollen grains, they are large, rough, heavy, and sticky. While in wind pollinated flowers, pollen grains are small, smooth, and light. In insect pollinated flowers, the position of the petals is inside the flowers. While in wind pollinated flowers, the position of the petals is outside the flowers. In insect pollinated flowers, the pollen grains, uh, uh, they, they are firmly attached to their filaments. While in wind pollinated flowers, pollen grains are loosely attached to their filaments. The position of the stigma in insect pollinated flowers is inside the flower. Why in wind pollinated flower, the position of the stigma is outside the flower. Now, the last difference, the pollen grains in insect pollinated flowers are produced in small amounts, small number. While in wind pollinated flower, pollen grains are produced in large Amounts. Let's get into our lesson for today. We are on the third lesson, fertilization and seed structure. The lesson will be examined following this plan. We have the learning outcomes, we have the previous knowledge, and then we will look at our problem statements followed by the lesson activity, a summary for our lesson, and we will end with an exercise. Then you'll go home with a take-home assignment. Learning outcomes. By the end of this lesson, learners should be able to explain the notion of fertilization. State the part, state the part of a flower in which fertilization occurs. Briefly explain 
the process of double fertilization in flowering plants. State the importance of fertilization. Draw the diagram of a bean seed. List the functions of the seed coat, cotyledon, plumule, micropi, and radical. Previous knowledge. The learners already have knowledge on structure and functions of the structure of a flower and the functions of the parts, pollination, verification of the previous knowledge. Let us verify our previous knowledge. What is pollination? What is pollination? Pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anthers to the stigmas of flowers. What is the importance of pollination to the plant? Let us uh, tell me the importance of pollination to the plant. Pollination ensures that the male gamete comes in close contact with the female gamete for possible fertilization. Now let us look at our problem statement. Mohammed is a Form 2 student in GBHS Kylie. He decides to, to do poultry farming to support his parents in the payment of his fee. He buys the laying breed of chicks. When these chicks became become mature, he notices that all of them were hens. When he incubates their eggs, they do not hatch into new chicks. Now, identify the problem in this statement. What is the problem in this statement? The problem in this statement is the eggs he incubated did not hatch into new chicks. How was this possible? How was it this possible that the eggs never hatched into new chicks? We, we then get into our hypothesis. The first hypothesis, the eggs were not fertilized. The second hypothesis, the eggs were immature. And our third hypothesis, the eggs were dead. By the end of this lesson, we are going to verify which of these hypotheses is or are correct. Let's get into our lesson activities. In our first activity, critically observe the diagram below and suggest a title for the diagram. Can you suggest a title for this diagram? We have studied uh, 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 the, the, the parts of flowering plants. The title for the diagram is a pistol or a capel. The second activity, identify the parts corresponding to the letters A, B, E, and F. Let us look at the diagram. The part A, as you see, is the pollen grain. The part B is the stigma. The part E is the ovary. It's the ovary, but other uh, uh, learners may say the ovule. And then the part F here is the egg cell or the ovule. Now, we have identified the parts which process occurs in the part E. Let us look at that part E. Which process takes place in the part E? The part E, as we said, is our ovary. The process that occurs in the ovary is fertilization. Now, that takes us into our lesson. 
fertilization in flowering plants. Let's look at the notion of fertilization. What is fertilization? Fertilization is the fusion of the male and female gametes the fu to form a zygote. Fusion of the male and female gamete to form a zygote. That is fertilization. In plants, fertilization occurs inside the ovary. Now, let's watch this video. The pollen grain comes to lie on the stigma. The pollen grain has two layers. The outer layer is known as exine and it is made up of a substance called sporopollenin. The inner layer is thin and is known as intine. At some places, exine is thin. These areas are known as germ pores, through which will emerge the pollen tube. Pollen grain has two cells. The smaller cell is known as generative cell, which will divide to form two male gametes. The larger cell is known as the tube cell, which will give rise to the pollen tube. The embryo sac has three cells towards chalyza. These cells are known as antiporals. There are two nuclei in the middle called the polar nuclei. Three cells are towards the micropyle. The middle larger cell is known as the egg. Two smaller cells are called the synergids. The egg and the two synergids would form the egg apparatus. The pollen tube emerges from the germ pore. The haploid generative cell divides to form two male gametes. The pollen tube enters the embryo sac through the micropyle. It enters through the degenerating synergid or between the egg and the synergid. The first male gamete fuses with the egg to form a diploid zygote. This process is known as fertilization. The second male gamete fuses with two polar nuclei to form a triploid endosperm nucleus which will change into endosperm cell. The fusion of three nuclei is known as triple fusion. Endosperm will divide later on to form nutritive tissue which will provide nourishment to the developing embryo. The process of fertilization and triple fusion together is called double fertilization. Now, we are going to continue with fertilization in flowering plants. When you look at the diagram of the pistil, which has been displayed here, we are going to see the pollen grain, which has landed on the stigma. This pollen grain germinates into a pollen tube. The pollen tube grows downwards, down the style, and into the ovary. The nucleus of the pollen grain, the male gamete, enters into the pollen tube and divides. When it divides, it produces two male gametes. The function of the pollen tube is to transport the male gametes down the style into the ovary where fertilization occurs. One of the male gametes fuses with the egg cell to form a zygote, and the other male gamete fuses with the polar nuclei to form a primary endosperm. Since there are two fertilizations, then we call that double fertilization. One of the male gametes has fused with the egg cell to form a zygote, and the other male gamete fuses with the polar nuclei to form a primary endosperm. Now, when the pollen grain lands on the stigma, it germinates into a pollen tube. The pollen tube grows downwards towards the style into the ovary. Two male gametes are formed inside the pollen grain. The function of the pollen tube is to transfer the male gametes <laughs> from the stigma to the ovary. Inside the ovary, one of the male gametes fuses with the egg cell to form a zygote. The second male gamete fuses with two polar nuclei 
to form an endosperm. This process is called double fertilization and it is characteristic of flowering plants. The zygote develops into an embryo found inside the seeds. The endosperm nucleus develops into a mature endosperm. The endosperm serves as a store of food for the developing seeds. After fertilization, the ovule, the whole ovule becomes a seed, while the ovary becomes a fruit. Let's look at the third activity. Critically observe the diagram below and identify the structure. Can you identify this structure? The structure is a bean seed. Now, what are the levels of the parts A, B, C, D, and E? Let us re-observe our bean seeds. When you look at the part A, the part A is the plumule or the young shoot. The part B is the seed coat, or we call it a, the tester. When you, when you, if you are used to roasting granules, when you roast granite, the part that you peel off from roasted granite is called the tester. When you look at the part C, C is the cotyledon. E is a tiny hole called the micropyle, while D is the young root or the radical. Now, we have identified these parts, A, B, C, D, and E. What, which part protects the seed? Which part protects the seed from uh, fungi attack, from bacteria attack, from uh, weevils? We, we see the part that surrounds the seed, which is the tester, or we call it the seed coat. That is the part that protects the seed. Which part stores food? for the developing seeds. The part that stores food for the seeds is the cotyledon. Let's look at the notion of the seed, of a seed. A seed is a fertilized ovule that has undergone growth and development. We said it that when, an, when, 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 when the ovule becomes fertilized, it forms a zygote, and the, the, the whole of you develops into a seed. Now, let's look at structure of a seed. When you look at the structure of a bean seed, a bean seed is composed of a plumule. The plumule is the young shoot. It grows and develops into a shoot. The shoot is the part of the plant which is found out of the ground. It contains leaves, flowers, branches. We have the radical. The radical is the young root. The root grows downwards. So the radical grows and develops into a root. We have the micropie. We said the micropie is a tiny hole. This hole admits water and mineral, water and oxygen into the seeds. We have the helium. The helium can also be called a scar. It is a mark which shows the point at which the seed is, was attached to a fruit. And we have the cotyledon. The cotyledons, they function for storage of food. The seed stores food like proteins, starch. And we have the seed coat which surrounds the seed. We said it functions for protection. The seed coat functions for protection. Now let's look at the functions of parts. You, you, in, in your notes, you have to copy these notes. We have the tester. We said the tester or seed coat functions to protect uh, the seed from bacteria and fungi attack. We have the cotyledon, or we call that the seed leaves, the cotyledons. They store food for the seeds. Plants with one cotyledon are called monocots. 
Why those with two cotyledons, they are called dicots. We look at the embryo. The embryo is made up of the plumule or the young shoot and the radical or the young root. The micropi. The micropi is a tiny hole, a tiny hole which will allow air and water to enter into the seeds. The embryo. The embryo, wait, let's look at the uses of the seeds. What are the uses of a seed? The seeds, are, they, they germinate to form new plants. When you plant the seeds, they will grow into new plants. They protect the embryo. Seeds also are used in the production of beverages, like the local corn beer we produce, what we call sha. It is produced from maize seeds. Some seeds are used as medicines. The seeds used as medicines, for example, cola nuts seeds, they are used to cure intestinal disorders. Some seeds are used as food to man. What are the seeds you use as food? Corn, beans, and the rest of the, 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 other, the other seeds. The seeds store food for plants. Seeds also help in the dispersal of plants. Some seeds are used in the production of oil. For example, you have palm nuts, which are used in the production of palm oil. Now, let us verify our hypothesis. What was the, the, the question? How was it possible that the eggs did not hatch into new chicks. We had three hypotheses. The first hypothesis read, the eggs were not fertilized. The second hypothesis, the eggs were immature. The third hypothesis, the eggs were dead. Now, what is the correct hypothesis? The correct hypothesis is the first hypothesis. The eggs did not hatch into chicks because they were not fertilized. There were no cocks to fertilize the hens. Because at the end, he discovered that all the chicks, were, um, the mature fowls, were hens. The wrong hypothesis. There are two hypotheses that are wrong. The eggs did not hatch because they were immature. No, they were mature eggs because they were produced by mature fowls so only mature organisms can produce mature eggs the eggs did not hatch because they were dead what could have possibly killed them the eggs were not dead verification of our hypothesis let's look at the solution what is the, the, the then the solution that you can advise Muhammad to undertake in order for him to carry out his poultry farming. Muhammad should buy cocks to fertilize the hens. Also, when next he buys chicks, he should make sure that they are of both sexes. Summary for our lesson of today. Fertilization is the fusion of the male and female gametes to form a zygote. In flowering plants, fertilization occurs inside the ovary. Only mature eggs can undergo fertilization. The pollen tube transports the two male gametes from the stigma to the ovary. Fertilization in plants is double fertilization. The, the fertilized ovule develops into a seed, while the ovary develops into a fruit. A seed is a fertilized ovule that has undergone growth and development. Let's look at this exercise. Solve this exercise. The first question, fertilization in plants occur in A, stigma, B, 
ovary, C, style, D, petals. Choose the correct answer from the options given to you. The correct answer here is B, the ovary. Fertilization in plants, in flowering plants, occur inside the ovary. Which structure transports the male gametes to the ovary? A, pollen tube. B, pollen sac. C, ovule. D, stigma. Which of these op options is correct? The correct answer here is A, the pollen tube. The pollen tube transports the male gametes from the stigma to the ovary. Fill in the spaces with suitable answers in the passage below. Look at this passage. A seat is protected by the dash on which is a tiny hole on which a tiny hole occurs called the dash which allows dash and dash into the seed. The seed also contains the embryo, embryonic root called the dash and the embryonic shoot called the dash. The dash marks the point of attachment of the seed to the fruit. Fill in the correct answers in the spaces provided. Now let's look at the answers. A seed is protected by the tester or seed coat on which is a tiny hole called the micropy, which allows water and air Particularly, the part of air is oxygen into the seed. The seed also contains the embryonic root called the radical and the embryonic shoot called the plumium. The helium or scar marks the point of attachment of the seed to the fruit. Assignment. Our take home assignment for today is to bring out the differences between pollination and fertilization. We have treated pollination, and today's lesson, we have treated fertilization. So in the form of a table, you bring out differences between pollination and fertilization. Make sure you do your assignment because it will serve as previous knowledge in our next lesson. We have come to the end of lesson three of module one. Our next lesson, will be on seed dispersal and qualities. See you next lesson. Una tege si, ma tege yop. Una tege minga, ma tege nyum. Una tege majang, ma tege ndom. Ma ne tambia niña ne injubia yen. Ngani bana, ma tege mot. Ngani la kiri, wa tege ndong. Esa tina, bia jinky.